Welcome back. Let me get things situated here. All right, so today's video is gonna be a comparison between the Contax T2 and the Contax T3. Now I've been shooting this guy for about five years now. And naturally I was in, intrigued by the T3. And when I started Googling and like YouTubing, YouTubing, when I started looking on YouTube to kind of see some of the differences between these two cameras, I didn't really ever feel like I had it explained to me in the right way. And so I just ended up buying one off eBay. I've been shooting this for almost two years now and, it, and it's wonderful. So I've shot, you know, hundreds of rolls with the T2 and dozens of rolls with the T3. So I have a lot of experience, I feel like. And, you know, maybe some of my observations are redundant, but hopefully this can be just a little bit of a help for people who have found themselves in the same kind of, in the same situation I was, specifically comparing the T2 and the T3. So I've got a little list here. I'm gonna be checking it out every now and then. So what do they have in common? Well, they're both small. T3 is smaller, right? But they're both small. They're very fast cameras. They're fun to shoot. They're fun without taking away the control you might need to really feel like you could take professional photos. You know, they shoot their film cameras. They're pretty simple. They've got a flash. And yeah, they both deliver great images. That's what they have in common. Now things start to get a little bit more different. So Contax T2, uh, it's probably what, eight? 100,000 more in 2023. You know, the celebs haven't helped with that. Same for the Contax T3. This guy's like 2,500 bucks these days. And that's a high price. And so why is this camera so much more than this one? Well, it's newer. You know, there's some good reasons. Some might apply to you, but some might really not. They might show you that, you know, maybe the T2 is the one for you. So so what are some of the key things to know? Okay, better build. They're both really well built, especially for any camera, but especially for point and shoot cameras. I feel like the T3 is maybe just a little bit better put together. Like things seem just a little tighter. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit more premium. I noticed that, I don't know, I think the shutter button feels a little bit better on the T3. It's hard to say. Yeah, something I noticed, maybe that's helpful to you. They're not weather sealed, by the way. Okay, autofocus, let's talk about that. First thing, the T3 autofocus is far superior, in my experience, to the T2 autofocus. The T2, you turn it on, as soon as you touch this guy, it's just, it's, it's gonna fire. So, as soon as I hit it, let's see. It just goes. And so that's really nice, especially you now you're shooting your dog or kids or something, right? You're just kind of shooting around. When this thing hits autofocus, you usually get the moment that you wanted because it's so fast. But you don't always nail it with this. Now the T3 is not slow by any means. You turn it on it's going to think a reasonable amount of time. And by reasonable, I mean it's just not a hair trigger. So here we go. I'll go. That's fast. And that was a long shutter speed. Like if I do this, if I go. So it's not a slow camera. It's just that you even get your finger close to that guy and it's going to, it's going to fire one off. So there's that. The Contax T3 in my experience, it basically always nails autofocus. In addition to that, if you half press the shutter button like that, now it doesn't show you in the viewfinder and maybe it should, but if you hold it and look up here, it says one and a half meters. It'll tell you what focus distance it's focused at. So, you know, sometimes if you're shooting in smoke or fog, that fools autofocus systems of all cameras. So you can give it a little quick half press and yeah, one and a half meters, that's, that's about right. And then go through with it. It's funny that this camera has it because it, it's so good that it really doesn't need it. 
if anything should have that, it's the Contax T2. Because, you know, I might focus on the camera right now and this thing says six miles. Well, you know. So, yeah. Oh, crap. I'm actually shooting Claire's film in here. Anyway, really great autofocus. This is not bad. It's just more what you would expect from a camera from the 80s or 90s whenever this thing came out. It's like an old film camera. It's super fast. It gets autofocus most of the time, but there will always be a couple of frames every roll where, where you're just kind of like, whoa, why didn't it catch that? So just the difference. This guy also focuses a lot closer. I don't know exactly what the minimum focus distance of either one of these is, but if you're at 35 millimeters and you know, you're holding a cup of coffee or something, sometimes, you know, like the T3, it's telling me this is too, too close. And so, you know, with the, with the, or sorry, the T2 was telling me it was too close. With the T3, I can be right here, which is crazy. And a little flower icon pops up, you know, like a macro kind of thing. It says I've got focus and it says 0.4 meters. So it, once again, it tells you and it, it'll nail that. So that's a big difference. I mean, I can focus, let's see. I can focus right here. So that's maybe about three feet. It's entirely reasonable. Once you do get used to the close focusing of the Contax T3 though, it's hard to go back sometimes. What else do we have? Okay, the dials on either camera. I'm just gonna explain each one. On the Contax T2, you've got a dial at the top. There's no button required to turn it. It'll just turn. So you have this green AF setting. The lens is gonna pop out and on the lens, you're gonna see that you can rotate this ring. This can put you into the flash modes and you'll see the different apertures listed, 2.8 all the way to 16. Notice that the 2.8 is green. And so when you're going into the 2.8, what you're selecting on the T2 is you're selecting program mode. The camera is gonna choose what aperture that it wants to use, which could be f2.8, but it's really only going to choose that in lower light scenarios. To some people, this is a bother. To me, I could care less. Um, it's not something that is gonna affect my experience with the camera at all. I'm not trying to just walk around shooting this f2.8. So for some people, it could be something to note for me in my you know five years of experience with it, no issue at all. Also on the wheel of the T2 is you'll see an infinity sign and all these different focusing distances. This is great because one, we know the Contax T2 autofocus is not the best thing ever, but the next thing after autofocus is infinity, which is really nice if you're like shooting out the window of a plane or through your dirty windshield, you can just change the dial to infinity and shoot and fire. So that's basically the operation on the Contax T3. You've got a button on this dial, which is obviously going to prevent you from unintentionally turning it. Sometimes when you're like scrambling to get the camera out of your pocket to take a photo, it feels like the button is holding you back. And every time I've thought about it and redone it, it, it's not at all. It's a good thing to have. It's also nice because I carry these cameras around just turned on with the lens out and they'll kind of fall asleep by themselves. And when I'm ready, I just kind of start half pressing the shutter. On the T3, it's really nice that it stays locked in. So on the T3 lens, you don't see any of the, the, the ring or any of the markings that were on the T2. Everything's done on the mode dial up top. So you have green P for program. And then after that, you have a 2.8, 4, 5.6, 8. You have the other apertures for aperture priority mode like the T2, but on the T3, you can select and tell the camera to shoot specifically in f2.8. I've never used it. This could be a make or break deal for you. Another difference is on the T2, you have this really great exposure compensation ring. 
the camera doesn't need to be turned on to even use it. It's kind of like, you know, an old manual camera or a Fuji camera. You can just look down, see the settings and adjust as you feel necessary before you even turn the camera on. On the Contax T3, not the case. The camera must be turned on and you're gonna use this mode button on the top. You have to press the mode button and then you use this scroll wheel to move it. It's also important to note that as the camera comes, when you change, there's in the Contax T3, there's a list of custom functions. And as the camera comes, say I turn the camera on, I hit mode, I hit plus one stop exposure. Great, I shoot, 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 turn the camera on, or turn the camera off. Next time I turn it back on, it's gonna reset itself to zero. So in the custom functions, you can change that. You just change it to where the camera retains the last setting that was input. I highly recommend that. Again, on the T2, you don't have that because it's a physical dial, which is much more preferable, I would say. Actual speed of use, both of these cameras are fast. There's not that many controls. It's everything that you need, nothing you don't. And you kind of get just a rhythm and a muscle memory for shooting them. So, you know, I don't feel slow on either one of these. They're just a little bit different and you kind of adapt to use the camera you're holding for your own use case. So it's not a big deal. I, I wouldn't want you to feel like if you had one and wanted the other that you were impaired in some way. They're both really quick and really great. Okay, back to the list. Okay, let's talk about the difference in the lenses. And, you know, physically, whatever. The Contax T2 has a 38 millimeter f2.8 Carl Zeiss lens, 38 f2.8. Also a Carl Zeiss lens over here, but instead of a 38 2.8, we've got a 35 2.8. They're both fantastic, and they're very different from one another. Not on the focal length, I'm not ever gonna notice that when I'm shooting, but the Contax T2 lens is, it's a lower resolution, higher contrast lens. And I'll say that again, lower resolution, higher contrast. The T3 is a higher resolution, lower contrast. And when I say lower contrast, I mean lower than the T2. This is still like, it's a Carl Zeiss lens. It's a very contrasty lens already. The T3 lens has more of that mid-tone kind of like micro contrast thing happening in it. I'm just calling it a lower contrast lens when comparing it to the T2, but it's definitely a higher resolution lens. It can resolve more. And I think in addition to that, the more accurate autofocus of the T3 really makes it look a lot sharper than the T2. Personally, I think I prefer the look of the T2. When this thing nails focus, it's just wonderful to me. The T2 also has like this weird little lens flare that usually happens, you know, here's your light source. If you're shooting like this or that, it's this ring at the bottom or the top of the photo. It's really nice because it's never in the middle of your photo and so you, I never have felt like I lost a photo because of that. So those are the differences. A lot of people might like the T3 more. Some people might like the T2. I personally like the T2. I like, let me say I like them both a lot, but if I have to compare and pick one, I like the T2. Okay. Oh, reliability. Well, these are old and electronic cameras and they're very expensive, right? So in my experience, the first thing that's gonna break and might break a few times on you is oh, the lens covers. You see that every single time you turn the camera on and off, the lens retracts in and out. And I've never had that lens movement fail, but that covering of the lens, I've had both of those go out. And so luckily Nippon Photo Clinic in New York, they're still repairing contacts cameras. I don't know like if they're gonna repair them for another five or 30 years or till next week, like we don't know that, right? It kind of depends on 
them having parts. But Nippon fixes them, they do a great job. Seems like every time I send a contacts to Nippon, it costs like 400 bucks, so consider that. But I've not used a huge amount of other point and shoot cameras. I had, I've had a few Nikon L35 AFs, which is a way different price point of a camera. And I lost one of those, broke two. I think everyone who I've known with uh, an Olympus, is it Mu, MJU? I don't know how to say it. It seems like those break all the time. From my limited experience, I think that these are pretty reliable, given the fact that, again, that I've been using this one for five years relentlessly. I've been using this one a lot, and the only issues that I've ever had with them have been small issues that I could still shoot around. I think at one point this Contacts T2 may have went back to Nippon for the film advance or something, but again, it's like 350 bucks, and I get the camera back. I don't, I don't know that it would make sense to own one if they were not repairable unless you just needed this for your process or like the money didn't mean anything to you. Otherwise, it's kind of a tough proposition, which leads us to better options. I don't know. It's a pretty personal thing. This is really my main experience with point and shoot film cameras. I started with some of the, like the Nikon one I mentioned and a couple of others. And honestly, uh, I was kind of unimpressed by them. And so for me, you know, this being my business, I'm gonna make money with these cameras and it's also a write-off for me, right? So like, I'm actually gonna use these as a tool if that were not the case, I, I don't think that I would have one, honestly. I would have something like this. And so, you know, this is like a, what's the most beautiful car of all time? FJ60 Land Cruiser. This is a FJ60. And this is one of those minivans from the 90s that always kind of looks like it's going downhill. But this performance wise, faster autofocus, more accurate autofocus, and the same kind of high resolution contrast feeling as the T3. This is a Canon EOS 7, Elon 7, and a Canon 40 millimeter pancake. This is gonna run you about 250 to 300 bucks. And yeah, this is gonna be, this is gonna outperform both of these cameras by far. So there's another consideration. You're not gaining this level of quality with these cameras that can't be attained with other cameras. They're not remarkably special when it comes to the level of quality that they bring. But what these cameras do is, you know, they fulfill the kind of, I want to carry this thing around with me. It's a camera for pleasure and enjoyment, but it will do that without sacrificing the functionality necessary of a professional camera. So in my mind, these are pretty singular and unique, I would say, but that's my opinion. And actually, you know, I tell everyone this is my favorite camera because it is, but I just sold it. And, you know, I've got an entire freezer full of film, but every year Kodak raises its prices like 20%, right? And I don't know, man. I think for film, I'm better off shooting medium format for my work. And I've got a ton of 35, but you know, I don't know how much more 35 millimeter film I, I want to buy at the, at the coming prices for 2023. So I can really burn through rolls on both of these cameras. And I'm trying to get out of that and maybe replace this with like an original Q2 or I don't know, something. I don't think anything to me is as fun as shooting Contax T3, T2. There are other premium point and shoot cameras that I haven't tried for sure, but I love shooting these cameras. And I'll still borrow, this one's Claire's, this is her T2. I'll still borrow this thing from her. But you know, I have film cameras back there that I haven't used because I'm always using this. So yeah, my favorite camera, but with the current state of film, I'm just gonna have to send it down the road. So anyway, if you have any questions, you know, just send me an email, write me a comment. I hope this was helpful. 
I wouldn't be afraid to buy one of these in 2023 or 2025, whenever they're well-made cameras. Like if you're watching this years from now, I would just go to Nippon's website and make sure that they're still servicing contacts cameras. They probably will be, but yeah, they're wonderful. And if you want one, get one. So that's it. Uh, I hope this was helpful to you. If you have any questions, just send me an email or leave me a comment. I'm definitely trying to grow this channel. And so if you want to leave the video a like, if you liked it or even subscribe, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but I would not be angry. But yeah, thanks again.